Yo guys, what is up? Welcome back to more Zero Hour. Welcome back to another Pro 1v1 match. I am today going to try and cast the game, but I am really losing my... Uh, well, not losing my voice. I've got a really bad cough. I've just apparently had COVID for the second time over the last three or four days. That's why it was a gap of like 48 hours with me not, not posting any videos. And uh, I thought today I was completely over it, but now I've transitioned to more of a cough. It's been basically like flu symptoms. Not too crazy, uh, just like a few days, but uh, yeah, I am getting better and hopefully going to start live streaming again soon. So I'm going to try to cast this. <laughs> but if my voice isn't quite there, then I do apologize and you know why. We've got Rising versus Scuba today over on the top right hand side of basically Arctic uh, Forgotten Forest, but it's uh, what do they call it? Forgotten Air Battle, I think is what they call it. We've got over in the top right, we've got Rising with the red. Uh, GLA, I believe he is. GLA regular. Down in the bottom left, we've got Scuba with the green. GLA stealth. Yeah, we know his stuff because he's got a stealth rebel. So yeah, actually, I've got a load of decent replays in my, uh, in my replay folder. But they're all of the same players we've been watching recently. Pretty much every single one of them includes Size. Size has been playing absolutely everyone lately. Um, and all of the other replays... Involve every other player that we've watched over the last week. So I thought we would delve into... We've still got expert players, but not the uh, not the usual... Not the usual x gal not the usual size. <laughs> the, the same old players we, we always watch. And we've got another uh, apparent GLA mirror on our hands. So both players going for the oils, but... but um, Rising securing this one. Up at the top left, and Scuba securing this one down here. He's kind of just left his RPGs hanging around for now. Maybe he's going to fully load this one. There's a technical coming for Rising. Maybe just doing a little bit of a scout. He knows there's a tunnel there. He's got a beacon. Unless that's got terrorists inside of it, I don't think it's a good idea to, to head in that direction. Scuba looking a little bit slow and ponderous. Just kind of waiting for something to happen. And that something does happen, and it happens to be a technical from Rising. This replay is probably a couple of months old now. Maybe even longer than that. But interesting player to watch is Rising, because uh, I keep seeing his name popping up in, uh, in gentle data. I keep seeing him playing games and stuff, and I'm interested to see what level he can reach if he, if he consistently... Uh, is playing 1v1 and playing the top players. He's got an expert badge for a reason. Way before my time, I think even before I was playing the game. Yeah, the next bit batch. So yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see his, ma his max potential if he does uh, if he does spam a lot. The rise is now coming in with another technical. Is that going to be a TNT? And is he going to get in that box? It's not. Uh, I don't even know what was in that. To be honest, is that just an RPG or a terrorist? What the hell is that? I think it's an RPG, isn't it? Technical here for Scuba. Uh, Scuba hasn't really done much damage to the enemy. I've got a few terrorists lined up here for Ryzen. That's a definite mistake. 100% that is a mistake. Don't know if this is a tournament or... I'm thinking... Uh, was it a tournament? Yeah, I don't know when this game is from, to be honest. Maybe just some Clan Wars games. I have no idea. No, it can't be Clan Wars because Scuba's not got his tag on. But this is a very slow opening, especially from Scuba, though. The most I've seen him do is send the technical through the mid. Uh, technical, again, from Rising, but this one also isn't going to achieve that much. The only attack that's really done anything was that technical here. Went through, killed a load of stuff, and then just kind of hung around there. Rising finally getting his oil now. That's very late, considering he had control of that since the very beginning. Yeah, in my view, that is very late. Not the most optimal way to play. I think uh, after playing this game for, for for many years, I think one of the strongest ways to cons strongest ways to consistently play is to actually go for early oil grabs from the beginning. Like skip one tunnel somewhere and actually invest that extra extra cash in the capture upgrade early on. Another technical from Rising. I'm pretty happy that that is some terrorists this time. And not just another empty technical because he knows that he can't get in there. Because it was boxed off. 
Ryzen definitely controlling this game, controlling the aggression, but Scuba did get a faster palace down and had that oil for longer. So economy-wise and the defensive setup-wise, I think is uh, in Scuba's favor, but I think Ryzen... I wouldn't say playing better. He's playing faster and more aggressive. But he's, lo he's lost his oil to a TNT to Scuba. Scuba's just playing chill mode, defensive. Letting Ryzen come to him. And making Ryzen pay for it. And there's another payment. In the form of a load of uh, quads and tanks. Uh, and now Ryzen's under a hell of a lot of pressure. E even though Scuba's basically done no aggression whatsoever. Like I said, that most he's done was that technical free in the middle. He hasn't had to really do anything because Ry Ryzen, all he did really was his TNT a few things that have just been rebuilt. He did an attack there which kind of failed. He's taking the map control, I suppose, over on this whole top section. There is something in there, though. I'm guessing probably an RPG. Scuba could lose something here. He hangs around there too long. Is he just going to brute force kill this, though? Does brute force kill it. There's a bunch of quads and scorpions on the way as well, though. But is this worth it here for Scuba? Because what have you actually achieved? What has he actually achieved? He killed one worker. Sorry, one worker, and he's killed one RPG. That's all he's achieved. And that, that tunnel can still just be finished by the, by the next worker. There is a battle bus out there. Palace now up for rising. But the black market's already 100% complete there for Scuba. So it shows how far ahead he is in terms of tech. There is no way <laughs> that that is getting TNT. I suppose, theoretically, maybe, maybe it could squeeze through there. But if that's loaded with RPGs as well, plus all of them tunnels around, around it, and they're all stealthed as well, that's going to be a very hard ass there for rising. Ryzen got a battle bus of his own now, though. That's uh, only on half HP, though. Yeah, he's controlling the pace of the game. That's probably what I meant to say before. Not playing better, but controlling the pace of the game. And playing faster and more aggressive. That's the way to describe it here, I think. There's a Jarmanit out here for Scuba. Could snipe the Battle Bus, but there's an enemy Jarman here as well for Ryzen. Maybe there's a bit of a Jarman standoff, but that one's going to get detected. Dead. See, Scuba just needs to kind of chill. That's... That's all he's been doing. Uh, Ryzen's actually making a supply here. A bit of a funky supply. Battlebus got sniped. Loaded the RPGs inside of there. Got sniped as well. Both Battlebus is now getting hole moded and still shooting each other. Screen shaking so much there. You couldn't really see what's going on. Another Battlebus in the mix now for Scuba. He's well and truly pushing this back. And uh, every attack... Ryzen is doing. Scuba seems to have some kind of an answer for it. Even if he did lose a tiny bit of ground. Yeah, that's... Is that good from Ryzen? I suppose you've got to clear it at some point if you are under pressure. Buggy there goes down for Scuba. That supply quite ambitious. This reminds me of the Peace Lover vs. Logica set. That were the most recent Peace Lover vs. Logica replays that I watched. Where Logica did the fast aggression here and did a fast supply and then got punished for it. That's exactly like kind of what Ryzen did there. But we're a little bit later into the game. Yeah, the fact that he's got the Tox Shells on these Scorpions... Uh, ...means he can, he can hole mode these Battle Buses easier. Because if it goes past 50% HP and then takes some Tox Shell, then the Battle Bus automatically gets hole moded. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter actually how much damage it takes, it just gets hole moded. A uh, bug in the game. One of many bugs in the game. Okay, CC being placed down. Two markets real close together there for Scuba. I'm going to spread them out. Four workers on his main. Decent amount of workers there. Decent amount of workers there. Only three on Ryzen's main. That's got 19 point something left. You see the difference? He's got a 3k extra. That's like an extra black market that you could be placing down. 
Not to mention Scuba's oil was faster and obviously still exists as well. So Scuba's getting the bounty money. Rising is not. So Scuba's ahead, even though looking at the map, the red dots surrounding the green, you would think not. I actually think uh, Scuba is favorite to win here so far. We've got 1750 XP for Scuba. He's getting cash bounty for the kills on the workers. Jarman Kel here is back out. Needs to be careful of that tunnel. I'm pretty sure he's been detected by that one before. Well, I missed that. <laughs> well, well, well. Ryzen's getting completely pushed back from here now. But now the uh, the oil playing field has been uh, evened out. I suppose Ryzen has got less pressure to push. But Scuba's just way ahead in terms of XP. Obviously getting the bounty money for all of these kills. And just uh, skyrocketing his economy compared to, uh, compared to Ryzen. He's only just dropping down his second market here. Yeah, the only thing here is this base is super compact. So if it did turn into a scud war, you took one scud there and that's like most of your economy wiped out. I think it would be good to spread them out a bit, like maybe one there. But yeah, Scuba really, uh, really dropping them down like crazy. Still putting uh, these buggies to work. Yeah, I still can't believe that TNT hit. And I, and I completely missed it as well. I need to pay attention better to the minimap. But despite Scuba's best efforts, the TNT did get in. I think... Um, because there was that gap that I said, if there's going to be a TNT, it's going to be through there. I think rather than do the palace there and all that kind of stuff, or even if you do do the palace there, you need to actually box the, the oil off better. Just by putting one, two, three tunnels like that. So there's literally no surface area where the TNT can hit. That would be better rather than doing all these spaced out ones. If you watch Fargo do it. He is very good at it. That was almost a Fargo pop, speaking of uh, speaking of Fargo. Scorpion's getting a little bit close for comfort though to these buggies. You have to turn around now though. Now going to get chased down by the buggies, ironically. A lot of the uh, missiles there hitting the ground. One Scorpion did escape. That one's going to get finished again, actually. Got buggies now being brought in. There's reinforcements for Rising, but he's way behind in the black market count, I think. I haven't done the exact count. We will do it in a second, but from first glance, it looks like. And look at the XP difference here. Scuba is almost, uh, well, he is level four. And Rising's only just turned level three. Yeah, Scuba's market spam, you see. There, there's no point doing a count because you can easily see he's got like double or triple the amount of markets. Plus all the extra... Uh, bounty money but because he because he was level three much sooner he was pouring that bounty money that that rising wasn't getting during those battles into into the market so it just shows that scoop has actually been more efficient with the uh with the engagements yeah by by like double you must be killing two units for every one basically
I reckon Scuba's gearing up for a GPS scramble there, maybe. Maybe that's why he's got all these units evac'd. But suddenly the map control is probably more 50-50. I think this foundation here is more solid. And up here, not so solid. Because he's only got like that one building, this building. And these two tunnels, whereas Scuba's got all of this stealth stuff here. And actually creeping forward of the worker there. So yeah, Scuba way ahead in this, in my opinion. Still spamming the markets. I think uh, maybe scrap those three and build in a build in a scud sooner would have been better. I think you see among the, the very the very top GLA mirrors nowadays, you're seeing more scuds built earlier. You was you are still seeing markets getting built, but it's more like one market get the upgrades and then the rest into um, into scuds. No, two or three scuds and then and then focus on the markets that we're seeing. But yeah, if it did come down to a Scud War, which a lot of long GLA mirrors do, then uh, Ryzen is geared up better for it in terms of base positioning. Speaking of Scuds, there is one. Because there's no single spot in Ryzen's base that's going to cause massive damage. You could maybe say here, but it's not really going to kill many markets. Scuba's got a bit of a traffic jam going down now, uh, going on down here in the, in the bottom right. Where is that worker, by the way? What? <laughs> okay. Let's give a sword to mess out. He's jogging, jogging on the spot. Oh, what was that? Jogging on the spot. What the hell? Oh man, I don't know if I'm literally seeing things today. Have I accidentally swallowed some magic mushrooms or something? <laughs> Who has ever seen that before? All the icebergs started moving and it made a noise when that building got destroyed. I, all them icebergs did start moving in there. I'm not going crazy here. So we had a worker jogging on the spot building a tunnel. Plus icebergs moving and some weird noise I've never heard before. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Here's a GPS scrambler now, and this is a beast of an army. I think this is just going to end the game. I don't think uh, Ryzen's got any chance to stop that. Although he is catching up in terms of the market spam. But this army now... Where's that buggy going? This game, we've had some weird stuff, man. Do you remember all them terrorists going over to the left side before? And now look at this buggy. <laughs> don't tell me he's going to... Is that GPS scrambled? Nah. It has to be a mistake. Surely now? You don't scout with a buggy. You scout with a technical or a bike. Okay. That is a tasty demo trap. Buggy's coming in here for Ryzen to try and defend. Where are them battle buses, though? That is why I'm missing. Here comes some battle buses. Doesn't want to run into that bunker and reveal himself, though. He kind of wants to surprise these buggies, I feel. These buggies for Ryzen so far have been pretty efficient. Scuba's attack here have been pretty bad. But these battle buses are the, the main piece of it. But there's a few demo traps. And the Jarman Kel there has sniped some stuff. And another battle bus goes down there pretty much for free. Didn't really kill anything. Did it kill one scorpion? Is that it? So yeah, so far. And there's a, there's a couple of demo traps spread around as well. So uh, Scuba's attack so far hasn't actually done that much damage. But you can see the, the tide turning a little bit. It's now Scuba's... Scuba's time for the aggression. After 20 minutes of the game, he's decided to attack.
Yeah, remember that Ryzen has the tanks because he's the GLA, whereas the Stealth obviously does not have any tanks. But at this point, you've got to argue... There's got to be a case for, is, is there even a need for the Scorpions? Because if you've got buggies, it kills pretty much anything the enemy can make. That damage up explodes, but doesn't do anything. Radar van there goes down. And Scuba, as long as he's keeping up his macro back at home, he's actually switching into quads now. He's spending all of his cash. Both players spending all their cash. Yeah, the next wave. Got to imagine Rising can't hold out for much longer. He's still not finished his 92% skip from which that buggy, the random accident buggy sent across the map, actually stopped him building. So he's got 5k sitting there, not used. He's now sending a worker there, but I think he's going to be dead by the time that skid gets up, actually. Another damage drop there from Ryzen. Even if he kills one quad, it's still worth it. There's just so many units here now for Scuba. As long as he's kind of just trading off and picking off black markets on the way. His economy here is way too strong. Ryzen's aggression here throughout the game has not been strong enough. To, to make any, any real difference or impact. And Scuba's just kind of sat back with the stronger economy. Got his faster oil. Protected his oil for, for much longer than Ryzen did. And Ryzen has been defeated. There comes the level 5 as well. So yeah, Scuba was kind of ahead throughout maybe all of that. You're seeing the difference there. Faster getting level 5. Uh, sorry, faster getting level 3. Getting the cash bounty. Had his oil for longer. He's literally collected, what is that, 50k more? 50% more? 50, imagine having 50% more money than your enemy. Of course you're going to be able to win that game. Of course you're going to be able to win that game. So yeah, units created 190 there for Scuba. So he's just basically invested that money into making loads more units and therefore got the win. That was a pretty nice game. Not the longest or the most action-packed in the world, but it was still a pretty interesting one. And I finished it without losing my voice, so that's good. <laughs> anyway, GG, all played, and see you in the next one.